Today uh, we're back in the Geotech lab and we're preparing a sample for the California Bearing Ratio Test, which is a really important test for design of road pavements and, and originally for airfield runways. Uh, the sample we're going to test today is a granular material, very much this is the kind of material we'd use in a road base, for example, and we'd compact on site to achieve its maximum strength. The CBR test, California Bearing Ratio test, involves compacting this material to as much as great a degree of compaction as we can. We'll see how to do that in a moment in our automatic compactor. And then uh, driving a ram into it and measuring the resistance was actually measuring the strength of the road base material. And the material here is, is clause 804 stone, which we use a lot in the construction of Irish roads. And we've removed the bigger stones because they would uh, interfere with the ram as it does the test. So it's, we've sieved out the bigger, st bigger stones. What are we going to do with this material here? Well, we're going to, in a moment, put it in a mould, a CBR mould. It's very, very heavy, big heavy base on it. This is a standard CBR mould. I've already weighed this and uh, uh, you need the weight of the mould so you can calculate the density of the compacted soil. And from my notes, the weight of the mould in the empty condition, and this is M1 in your handout, is 8,940 grams. That's 8,940. The empty weight of the mould, M1. Now, before we add too much uh, the material to the mould, we have to uh, add up some water. So we know from the Proctor test that we did last year uh, that the soil, uh, that the, the uh, road based material, the, the aggregate, uh, will compact best at the optimum moisture content. So we'll be adding water to bring it close to the optimum moisture content so we can get the maximum strength from the compacted effort in the laboratory. So I'm going to add some water with a big sample here. I don't think we'll need all of it. And I'm just adding some water here. We'll mix that through. Very much like the cream concrete you could say. Once uh, I keep going, I need a bit more mixing. Add a little bit more, I just think that it's still a bit on the dry side. Just adding some more dry material there, this particular example possibly a little bit, a little bit too wet. Okay, here's our mould. Now before we add the material, we'll add uh, a collar to it. This is a collar, protective collar. And this is particularly necessary during the compaction phase of the sample preparation. And it's just important when you're doing tests, don't weigh it with the collar on when you're weighing the mould. Colour is just temporary. Okay, now to prevent making too much of a mess, I'm just going to move the mould into the tray. It's a heavy mould. And I'm going to fill the mould in three layers. This is the first of three layers. And uh, once the idea is to have it compacted to about one third of its height after the compaction. And when we have it ready, when we have it at one third of its height, We'll, uh, compact, uh, we'll add in a second and then the third layer of soil and uh, compact it right up to the top of the mould. So I'm watching the level inside the mould here. And normally I fill it to about, about halfway. So there we go, that's ready to put into the compactor. So just to show you that's the loose material in the mould. And now we're going to set up the compaction apparatus here behind me and we compact each layer in the CBR test 
with 67 blows of a 2.5 kilogram rammer and uh, the machine will do that automatically. Okay, this is our automatic compaction machine. We set the blows here for 67 blows and inside here we have a rammer which can be raised and lowered and dropped as it were to uh, compact the soil. I just checked that we have the power on. Now, the sample is in the mold here, it is here. So just carefully it's secured at the base here by two lugs on either side, and uh, the collar protects the edge of the sample, the edge of the mold rather, from the impact from the compactor. I was going to try it here with the safety door open so you can see the action of the compactor. However, I'm going to stop it quite quickly because the noise is quite high. I just want to give you an idea of what is happening. Here we go, press the green button. So now what I've done is I have compacted the first layer with 67 blows and I don't know if you can see it there but it's pretty well compacted inside in the mould. Now what we're going to do now as we're going to off camera is I'm going to continue and um, compact the rest of the sample and set it up in the apparatus. Okay now we've set up our sample, this is it here in the CBR mould and um, I hope you can See it clearly, we've compacted the soil in the mould in three layers, 67 blows per layer in the automatic compactor, and we've now set it up in a California bearing ratio test frame. And the test, just to take a quick look at it, involves driving this 50 millimeter diameter ram, the cylinder here, into the soil sample and measuring how difficult that is, measuring the force it takes to push it in on the proving ring here, which we record through the divisions on the proving ring dial gauge up here. Now we're concerned with the force as we penetrate the soil, as we drive the uh, ram into the soil. We measure the penetration with this dial gauge here, um, which records uh, the movement in fact of the cylinder because the way the machine works is it pushes the plate up and pushes the sample up against the ram. So as it pushes up, uh, the edge of the cylinder is um, where the dial gauge is located, the displacement gauge, and as the, as the uh, mold moves up, the displacement gauge will record the movement, and that records the penetration of the ram into the soil. Before we start that, there is some additional data that you need to have. We mentioned that the weight of the mold empty was 8940 grams. We're going to need to know the density of this material, of this rosestone material inside in the mold. So the M2 in your handout the mass of the mould and the soil is 14,100 grams. That's 14100 grams. And uh, if you turn to the page to, in your notes there with the bulk density determination, you'll see the volume is, of the mould is 2,305 cubic centimetres. And uh, you can use that information to calculate the bulk density or weight density the bulk density rather just in megagrams per cubic meter of the soil that we're testing. Now to conduct the test uh, and to record the data you will use a recording chart like this. In a full test we'll test the sample twice. The first test is for the top of the sample which we're set up for here. The second test we will actually turn the sample upside down and take off the base plate and test the base of the sample, the bottom of the sample test. 
So in your handout we have a data sheet for recording the top of the sample and we also have a data sheet over the page for recording the uh, bottom of the sample test. So we set two tests. Oops. And when we test it here, we test to a maximum of 7.5 millimeters penetration. Later on, when we do the graph of penetration versus force for the two different tests, the top of the sample and base of the sample, we measure the CBR value at 2.5 millimeters and at 5 millimeters penetration. So as long as your test runs past 5 millimeters penetration, you'll be able to measure off the CBR. So let's take a look at the data sheet. Here we have the penetration in millimetres. So the divisions on the dial gauge are in one hundredths of a millimetre and therefore um, we divide the, each millimetre into four and we get 20, 0.25 millimetres for each recording and that corresponds to 25 divisions on the dial gauge. So once the test starts we record at every 25 we record the reading on the proving ring in terms of force. Then when you've completed your test to 7.5 mm, millimetres, you can reverse it, flip it over and take off the base plate and test the base of the sample. That will give you two sets of test data for this one material, which we compare with the 100% CBR test result. I'm going to show you how to process those results in the tutorial after this video. Um, let's just take a look at how data recording would go and then switch the machine on. Now, as I said, when the machine is switched on, it pushes the base plate up against the RAM and the penetration is shown here on the top dial gauge. And watching the displacement gauge, when it gets to 25, which is 0.25 of a millimeter, which is now, I read off the top reading here, which is just two divisions. So I record two divisions here on the data sheet. The dial gauge continues, you don't get to stop the test to take a reading, it has to run straight through. The next reading is at 50 millimeters and it reaches 50 millimeters. Again, I read off the force reading here on the proven ring dial gauge, it's three divisions. And repeat that at 75, uh, 75 divisions penetration and then again at 100, 125 and gradually record the proven ring readings for all of the different values of penetration which I need to complete, uh, get a full data set from this top of sample test. So just coming up there to um, 100 and really it's just gone to four divisions. So I'm going to provide you with this data, just turn that off there, uh, from my test results uh, for you to graph both the top of the sample, as you see here, but also the base of the sample test results and then we process that data and what you do is take your proving ring divisions and multiply them by the proving ring factor, K, uh, to get the force uh, acting um, on the sample. And the proving ring factor, K, is given on the uh, two pages back. Here it is here. It's point K is 0 0.0234 kilonewtons for each division. So if you multiply the number divisions by 0 0.0234, that will give us the force reading here for our data sheet, and then we can graph that force on the graph provided here uh, on the next page. So that's the task I want you to do. Your next immediate next task is to uh, follow this video with the tutorial, and I'll show you how to process the results, produce a CBR graph, interpret the graph to obtain CBR values and that will enable you to complete uh, your test report for the California bearing ratio test.